welcome to my YouTube channel. So this weekend is going to be really different for me. I'm actually going on a wildlife photo shoot workshop. So join me and let's see where this journey takes us. Well, I've arrived at the campsite and I'm just about to set up and have some dinner. So I'm going to make gammon steak. I'm going to have some broccoli and mixed veg with it. And if I'm lucky, I can chase it down with a wee glass, a wee glass of red wine. So what I'll just do is I'm just going to get set up just now. And the reason that I'm here is tomorrow morning, I've got to get up really early because we've, still in District Camera Club, have organised a wildlife photography workshop. So it's something that I don't, haven't really done. So I'm going to go along because it sounds quite exciting and it's something that's new learning and it's fantastic. Oh, we tip here. Anyone that's using a camper van that's got um, kitchen roll above their gas cooker, because my friend Mary discovered the hard way that when you put the hob on it could catch fire and then before you know it you've got a wee fire in your hand so I always tuck it away in the unit to keep it safe before I put the gas on anyway I'm going to get the gammon steak prepped just a wee bit of seasoning there on the old gammon steak the right hash of bringing that tin foil together with that gammon steak it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. I'll just tuck this up because you don't, you never know about the juices. I will shove it in the tray. I'll pop it in the oven. And then in 15 minutes, I'm hoping it'll be ready. So I brought some spinach for the house. I've got some broccoli and mixed veg. But I've set my timer for 10 minutes and then once my 10 minutes is up I'll put the broccoli and the mixed veg in just to give it a wee heat up just to give me something to eat. In case anybody's wondering I have got a vent I've opened the skylight in the top of the van so we're all safe I've, and we've got loads of alarms in the van anyway so. So I'm putting this veg in first because it's it's actually frozen veg. Um, it's meant to go in the microwave. So I thought oh, I'll give it a wee try and you never know. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. So I'll give this a couple of minutes first. And then what I'll do is I will shove the broccoli in. And then when the gammon steaks are ready, my plan is I'll make a couple of fried eggs. Put a couple of fried eggs on the gammon steak. And all going well, this could turn out to be not a bad wee dinner tonight. Alright, so let's get this plated. And I've got space, what I might just do is give the gammon steak a wee flip just on each side. Just pop in the gammon steak in the frying pan just to brown it to finish it off. And then I'll get the two fried eggs in and then hopefully we've got a dinner fit for a camper. Right, that's the gammon steak which is quite large. Now for the fried eggs. Try my best to have a couple of nice fried eggs here. I'll get my spatula. And then once that's ready we're good to go. I want a runny egg for my gammon steak, so hopefully that's what I get, as I can say, sunny side up. Alright, so a wee bit of HP sauce at the side will do absolute wonders. 
and I'm counting that as a sin. So, I've got my salt and pepper pots here, my little Nessies. Caroline bought these in the green welly. So I thought I'd better make better use of them. All right, I'm going to have my dinner and uh, I'll catch back with you soon. Well, cheers. Before I settle down for the night, <clears throat> where are we going tomorrow? So Roger at the Stirling District Camera Club, he's an avid wildlife photographer and has got a huge amount of experience. So Roger set up, there's probably a group of 15 of us um, going tomorrow and I think the name of the place is Strathdean it's just south of Inverness and what we're really looking for is uh, winter hares because <clears throat> as you probably know that the hares in the summer are brown and in the winter they actually turn white to camouflage against the snow so there's been a lot of snow recently we don't know if we're going to see snow tomorrow but Roger did a recce today and he's messaged round earlier saying that he managed to see a lot of hares, uh, hawks, sparrow hawks and quite a few um, pieces of wildlife. So here's hoping we're lucky tomorrow. So I've done quite a lot of preparation for this trip, not in the sense of photography, but in the sense of equipment. So just in case anyone is going out for wildlife, the advice that we got from Roger, and you can see I've taken a lot of notes. So we've got, I've got two pairs of waterproof trousers because I believe we're going to be crawling and lying in the ground quite a lot tomorrow because we'll be hidden away from the wildlife and that'll allow us to get shots. I've never done this before, so I'm only, <laughs> I'm only sharing what's been shared with us. I've got a couple of jackets. I've got a waterproof jacket to go over my jacket. I did have a bright blue waterproof jacket, but I bought a green one so that I camouflage in a little bit. I bought a camouflage camera cover for the long lens, so that would that will support the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 400 lens, and it'll be the 100 to 400 lens that I use tomorrow because I'm expecting to be quite a distance away for the wildlife so as not to disturb them, and hopefully that will give us a good chance of capturing them. I brought two pairs of gloves. Um, I've got a set of waterproof proof gloves and I've got my normal fingerless kind of fisher's gloves and I've got my hat. So I've charged everything, all my batteries are charged for the GoPro for the camera. I'm hoping to try and film or make a video tomorrow. Um, I have no idea how that's going to work out but we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully we're lucky and hopefully we're lucky that it's not raining but we're prepared for the rain. Um, Roger also goes to the extent of sharing with us about making sure that we take water, we've got food, a lunch, so we've got a change of clothes. So Roger's been really, really good and really, really thorough about the preparation, especially for novices like myself, so that we know what to expect. Um, well, maybe no, not what to expect, but what to prepare for, for when we get there. So what I've done is I've been watching a couple of wildlife um, videos and I've kind of picked up two or three different tips from the videos. So one thing tomorrow I'm going to have to be conscious of, I won't need a tripod. So I'm not, because I'm a landscape, predominantly a landscape and kind of car photographer, this is going to be different. So I won't need a, I won't need a tripod, which means because I'm hand holding, I'll need a faster shutter speed. That faster shutter speed will then dictate what f-stop I use and what ISO setting I use. So it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. Um, focal distance, again, that's going to range, gosh, anywhere from about, depending on the lens, 100mm to 400 Um It'll be really interesting, and if I go 400 that means my shutter speed ideally needs to be at 800th of a second. That way I reduce or minimise any shake and I, I try and get sharpness in the wildlife subject, whatever that might be. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of things I've been looking at. Uh, my white balance, I've been looking at my focal point. So I'll be looking at, will I use a consecutive shutter speed or will I just use single shutter speed? 
but what I'll do is when I'm there in the morning I'll get tips from the guys so I've ticked all the boxes I've got all the equipment that Roger has uh, suggested so all it takes now is just to get there in the morning so I'm going to have this wee wine I'm going to watch a movie and I'll catch back with you in the morning Well good morning everyone It's uh, it sounds really really windy outside I've had a lot of rain the van's been moving about during the night so right let's get this Let's get up, get ready, have some breakfast, and then get the van ready to shoot up to the wildlife photography location. All right, so that's me ready. I just made my scrambled egg for my rolls. Um, the only challenge I have in this campsite is there is no signal. So if there's any messages that are coming through overnight, I don't get them. What I'd need to do is walk down to the beach and then I'd pick up a signal at the beach, but it's just a wee bit too far. So I'm going to have a nice wee breakfast. I'll get tidied up, I'll get the dishes all washed and then I'll get the van ready for us heading off to a half an hour. He's got his new camera, it looks an absolute cracker, Nikon Z9, so the quality of his photos for yesterday are incredible. But we'll no doubt we'll get more and more instruction as the day goes on, because this is the very first time I've been here. I'll just walk over here, everyone's getting ready. Morning all. Morning. How's you? All good. You Freezing. Oh, Don't worry. <laughs> it's already hit my face first thing in the morning. If you're freezing, you should be dressed properly. I am. I've got my long johns and everything on. <laughs> no. And there's Willie. Morning, Willie. Oh, I'll put my rucksack on. So, right, we'll catch back when we're ready to move. So that's the team ready. Willie borrowed me the snood. We'll go and listen to Roger. For most of us, it's already started. Um, it, it's free form, so you can do whatever you like and head off in all directions. Everybody's responsible for themselves and their own safety. If you feel at all uh, awkward with what's going on, just stop and come back down this track to the, the cars and we can sort stuff out here. I've got a safety bag, I've got a um, satellite phone if there's an emergency, but most phones now will go on to satellite anyway, so you can use those if you've got an emergency. Um, I don't think the weather's going to change from this, so this is what it's going to be like. It's quite boggy up there. Um, the mountain hares are standing out, I can see them with a pair of binoculars from here, so Kenny will show you where they are. Yeah. Um, in terms of ethics, if I could ask you all please, um, the first priority is the animal. So, um, at any stage, if you think you're stressing out a, a, um, a creature, back off, come home. So if you've got a sitter, mountain hare for instance, um, the, the right answer is to photograph it, move slowly in stages towards it, never get above it because that's where its threat comes from. Uh, so stay below it physically, approach it slowly in stages. If it's uncomfortable, you'll know it because it'll start twitching and thinking about the way. Um, there are two, two types of mountain hare here. There's the sitters, and they will sit pretty much until you get within 20 yards of them. And there's runners, and if they're going to run, they'll run. So, um, and they make nice pictures as well. So, so if I'm going to ask you just to think about the animal all the time, because uh, the tension, you know, once you get going, you want to get that perfect shot. The, the temptation is to get too close and to actually stress it. 
Um, other than that, have a great time. Uh, I'll yes. wait for the girls and then give them a hard time. So that's Kenny showing everyone where all the mountain hares are. So we'll just walk up, catch up the wind this morning. It's pretty fearsome. So we'll just keep walking. Kenny's our lead this morning. I don't know how this microphone's going to work with this crazy wind. But you just turn around and you can see the landscape of where we are it's absolutely stunning this morning I've just taken a shot of those derelict houses with the light in the mountain in the background so if that's worked out I'll share that with you now um, but we'll keep trekking up until Kenny gives us an idea where the hares are So Kenny thinks he's spotted a mountain here over in that direction. So we're all moving up, being really careful not to disturb it. And uh, hopefully we can get close enough and get a picture of it. All right, so we're lying low, just waiting to see if we can grab the mountain here. I've taken a couple of shots really, really low, so hopefully they work. Uh, Richard's with me. Hello. I'll take the GoPro now. And then if I turn the GoPro around, you'll be able to see where it is. And there's Richard shooting away. Oh, it's turned, so I'm going to take a photograph. So this is the mountain here. First time I've ever shot a mountain here. And you've got to stay quiet and low, so as not to disturb them. Right, I've come further up the hill because I've left Brian and Richard and Alan and Lorna the, the mountain hares bunkered in to a recess in the grass so what I'll do is I'm just going to move up and keep walking up the hill and see if we can find others Alright, so I've just come up yeah, the mountain halfway and I've met Kenny and Wally There's Kenny Get his shots. And there's Wallet. So they've been chasing hares all morning, and there's one right in front of us over there. That's, that's five we've seen this one. You've seen five? five? I've seen, this is my second. Did you get, did you get a clear shot of that? You didn't? So Kenny's advised me that I can get a wee bit closer to the mountain here. So I've just moved over and I'm hiding behind a tuft of heather. There's Richard coming up, getting his shorts, he'll slowly move up. Kenny's away down there because he spotted another hare. And this is the hare that we're shooting here. We're, uh, just hoping if we wait long enough it might start to move a little bit or maybe pop its ears up or oh, you never know something a wee bit more interesting than just sitting there
arrived so everybody's still waiting on movement for that here so I think what we'll do is head off up this direction and uh, let's see what we can find absolutely stunning view up here we're not far for the summit of this mountain if we turn the camera around there's the car park down there so it's absolutely beautiful and yesterday Kenny was up here doing a recce and believe it or not this was all pure white with snow so the snow's melted overnight right I'll keep walking I'll keep looking for new wildlife well it's mostly mountain hares and um, we'll see if we can catch up at the next one so Kenny and John and the guys have spotted a hare so I'm just walking low below the hare so as not to start with and then I'll slowly work my way up beside John and see if we can get a shot I'll see if I can see it from down here and if I go really careful I might be able to get some shots for this area so we've found a third or my third here this morning Well, I've walked for way over there and Karen has just said there's a, a hare up here somewhere. Jeez, oh, the wind is relentless. But let's walk down beside Karen. Whoops. And see if we can find... Oh, there's a hare. Oh, wow. There's a hare over there. Right. All right, so we've been photographing that here for quite a while. The wind is absolutely crazy. There's Willie and Richard and Heather and Brian in position, ready for their shots. Right, I'm going to go for a wee wander because there's only so long you can sit and only so many shots you can take. <laughs> the rabbit in exactly the same position. Sorry, I should have said hare, it's not a rabbit. It's a mountain hare. So I'm going to keep walking and let's see what else we can find. So I'm just walking over this ridge. Still some snow, but I'm just having a wee nosy to see if I can spot any hairs but it's really tricky because sometimes you see a white spot 
and then before you know it, it's snow. So I'm going to walk over this ridge and uh, let's see what we can find. There's a wee bit of snow. Let's give it some crunch. There you are. Right, see if there's anything over this ridge. So John and I have just come up to the ridge. There's nothing here. I'll turn round, you can see. It's just a big ravine with the mountains. So we've decided just to head back down the mountain. So, and then we can see what everybody else is. Because everybody else looks as though they're heading back to the cars. So, hopefully it's a lot easier getting down. All right, so John and I, are just walking back to the van there's a uh, for once it's flat we've been like mountain goats all morning which is behind us which is there <laughs> and we reached that peak up there so luckily we're back down i can feel it in my legs in one piece and, and in one piece is more more important right so heading back to the van and we'll catch up soon we're not quite sure if we're going to another destination or if we're just finishing up here So we've just arrived at Loch Garten RSPB site. I'll just turn round the camera and you can see. So we're here to look for a specific bird. Is that the bird we're looking for? Crested tit we're looking for. That's is that what that is? No. no that's, uh... So we're here to look for crested tits. So Roger's um, going to follow up later on. But we managed to get here early. So we're just going to walk around the nature reserve and see what we can see. Hanging. This, this is all the tit watchers. Are they, is this the tit watchers? What is it? We're looking for crested tits. I have no idea what a crested tit looks like. Oh, there we go. Did you get it? Oh, lovely. Did you get that one? Oh, good. Got Kenny and Roger scouting for what is it, crested tits to look for? Kenny just focused on that wee colt that you just see it in the tree. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, he's posing for him as well. So, this is how you pass. A tranquil Saturday. All oh, these grown men sitting watching these <coughs> <me. laughs> tiny <laughs> birds. <laughs> as long as it's clean. <laughs> as long as you can think of a good title for it, you practice. Does my bum look big in this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've had a great day. Um, thanks very much to Roger for organising the wildlife trip. Hadn't photographed mountain hares before and it was a fantastic experience. Um, really, really good. So I'm just here at the loch side. So what I'll do is I'm going to finish the video here. So thanks again to everybody for Stirling Camera Club. Had a fantastic day. 
If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching, and here's to the next video.